Most people learn how to prompt Claude from random tips on the internet, but Anthropic, the company that actually built Claude, released their official prompting guide. Almost no one's read it. I did. And here are the seven most important rules, straight from the people who created the model itself. Let's get into it. So as I mentioned, these tips came directly from Anthropic, the company that made Claude. And this here is the blog post that I'm referring to. So it walks through a series of tips, not just seven, many more, but I wanted to call out the seven that I feel like are applicable to the broadest audience where people can get direct impact of using these tips. And we'll start with tip one, which is to be clear. Now, this is more critical than ever for all of the models that are relevant today, such as Gemini 3, GPT 5.2, Claude Opus 4.5. All of these models are very good at following instructions. So when you're clear with the model, you're going to get a higher quality response. And the AI is going to work in the direction that you care about. Vague prompts tend to lead to common patterns that are kind of considered AI slop today. So it's generic outputs that aren't very useful. Now, why does this happen? It happens because most models have a gravitational pull towards what's most common. So here we have gravity pulling in all of the commonalities of the internet. And here's the default state. An example here is UIs. So oftentimes when an AI creates a UI for you, it's going to have purple gradients and it's gonna have rounded corners. Reason being is the AI was trained on millions of examples that had that type of aesthetic. So the AI thinks that if it provides you that aesthetic, you're going to be satisfied as a user if you don't provide it very specific instructions. And that's the key here. We have to be specific to escape the gravitational pull that is all those examples the AI was trained on historically. And that's what this tip highlights. So I'm gonna walk you through a few examples of what good looks like. So on the left-hand side, we have a bad prompt. This is weak. So we're basically stating create an analytical dashboard. We, had, we gave no specificity here. A better prompt is create an analytical dashboard, include as many relevant features and interactions as possible. Go beyond the basics to create a fully featured implementation. And there's a few key things I wanna call out here. So first off, we're stating, I want you to include as many, so be as inclusive as possible when it comes to the features and interactions relevant to the dashboard we're trying to create. Another thing we're making explicit is the AI needs to go beyond the basics. So it's going beyond what's normal and creating something that's fully featured that's relevant to the initial dashboard we're trying to create. And this is what a good prompt looks like that's more clear. And here's another example for presentations. So here we have a weak example that says create presentation. An improved version of this is to create a professional presentation in relation to our quarterly results. I want you to include thoughtful design elements, visual hierarchy, and engaging animations where appropriate. And as you can see, we're being very clear on what we want the AI to include in the visuals here, and that's key. So this is our first tip, which is be clear. Quick pause in your regular programming. This video is brought to you by me, as always. So two quick things. First off, below is a 30-day AI insight series, completely free. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox so you can apply AI to your business and your work. The second thing is if you'd like to work with me, there's a variety of ways you can do that, either through a private AI community or directly one-on-one. -on -one. You can check that out below as well. Let's get back into the video. Our second tip is often something that a lot of people skip, which is explain why. And what do we mean by this? Well, when you give the AI some sort of context, so you ask it to do something, if you also add the intent as to why you're asking the AI to do this and why it's important for the AI to take that task on, it can actually infer a lot from what you've stated, even if you've not made it explicit. In other words, Claude can figure out things that you didn't even say, as long as you're explicit about why you're asking the AI to do this in the first place. And that often usually derives a higher quality output for you. Now let's look at some examples. So this first example here is a weak example. Not a great prompt. We're saying write this in a formal tone. It can be improved. A better way of saying this is I want you to write this in a formal tone because remember we're emphasizing the why here. It's going to our board of directors and we need to look credible and professional. By providing just this context, the AI is going to be able to create something that's more aesthetically pleasing and aligned with the quality you're seeking by knowing this specific intent. Now here's another example. So here we have the weak prompt of saying, keep it short. A better version of this is stating, keep it short because again, we're highlighting the why. I'm sending this to my team via text message and longer messages don't get read. Again, we're highlighting the why, which is going to get better quality outputs from the AI. That's our second tip. And now we'll move on to tip three, which is giving good examples. So the thing with examples, especially in relation to the state-of-the-art models today, such as Opus 4.5, Gemini 3, GPT 5.2, all of these models, they follow the examples to the T. So if you include an example in your system prompt, the AI is going to follow that very specifically. So it's important that you don't misdirect the AI by accidentally including something in your example that you don't want in its output. And a meta lesson in relation to this tip is not only is the example that you explicitly call in the prompt dictating what the AI gives you, but also the way that you write your prompt determines how the AI gives you an output. 
What does that mean? In the sense that if I write my prompt in a very playful, fun, and simple way, the AI is likely going to respond and give me an output in that way. If I might write my prompt in a very formal and structured way, the AI is going to do the same. So even the way that I write my prompt is going to dictate how the AI outputs its response to me. So it's important to note not just the example, but also your prompt matter. Now onto tip four, which is asking for the format, not saying something that you don't want, you wanna say what you do want. Because often when you look at system prompts, people have really huge negating terms of saying, never do this or don't do that or whatever else. Well, with AI today, since it follows instructions so well, all you have to do is say what you want instead of what you don't want, and the AI is likely going to do that more effectively. What are some examples of this? Well, here's an example. There's first one is a weak example. So we say, do not use markdown in this response. The reason this is weak is because we're using a negating term. So we're saying do not. A better version of this is your response should be composed of smoothly flowing prose and paragraphs. This is going to give us what we want instead of avoiding what we don't want. Another example is here we have a weak version saying make it look nice, <laughs> not, very, uh, not very clear. And a better version of this is saying use clear headers in each section. Bold the key takeaways, add a summary at the top. We're very explicit about what we want. The AI is likely going to achieve that because it's very good at following instructions. So that's tip four. Ask for the formats that you want instead of saying what you don't want. Now on to tip five, which is being direct about actions. What does this mean? Well, oftentimes when you want AI to do something for you, we need to avoid suggestive language. So instead of saying suggest, think about, consider, you need to be clear in saying, I want you to change this now, edit this thing, or make whatever. By being explicit about it taking action, it will then take the action. But oftentimes the AI can default to being more oriented towards not taking action to, to ensure it's not breaking anything or doing anything it shouldn't. So if you say, hey, I want you to suggest this, it will suggest something, it won't change anything. If you want it to change something, then you explicitly state that you want it to change it. So be clear on the action verbs that you're using with the AI. And here are just some examples. So on the left-hand side, we have a weak prompt, which we're stating, can you suggest some changes to improve this function? The reason this is weak is we're stating suggest, we're being more careful with our language, which means the AI will be careful with its actions. It's not going to do anything. It's only going to suggest what we need to do to the function. This is in relation to code. A more explicit way of doing this that's more action oriented is saying change this function to improve its performance. That's when the AI goes off and does the action for you. Another example that's unrelated to code is proposal prompts. So a weak version of this is what do you think about this proposal? This is just looking for feedback, no actions. If you want an action to occur from the AI, we would say something that's more strong, which is edit this proposal to make the benefits clearer and add a call to action at the end. This means the AI is going to edit. It's going to do a thing because there's an action verb inside the prompt. So be clear about actions. If you wanted to suggest something or act acts on something, you need to be clear about that. Now on to tip six, where Claude is actually extremely good at research. It's gotten much better over the last iteration of versions that that Anthropics released with Opus 4.5. Now let me show you a weak and good example. So a weak example here for research in relation to AI is saying, research my competitors. This is not good because it's vague and it's not clear on what you want. A better version of this is research my top three competitors in the home services industry. For each one, I want you to find their pricing, their main services, and their customer reviews. Compare them to my business and tell me where I have an advantage. So here we're explicit about the type of research we wanted to do, what we wanted to do with the research after it's gotten back in a series of other things. So this is what a good research prompt looks like. And something that's really interesting about the guide that was provided from Anthropic is they actually provided a meta prompt. So this specific prompt right here can be applied to almost any research use case that you have, and it's going to improve it. I've been using it for the last couple of days, and it's night and day in the quality of the research that I'm get getting back from the AI by using this prompt. So I highly recommend just copying and pasting this from their guide and using it inside your research. Now, why is this so good? Well, there's a few things as to why this prompt is so useful. First off, we're asking the AI to research in a structured way, so be more formal in your process. But also we're asking, as you gather data, I want you to develop competing hypotheses. So multiple opinions against what's happening here. In addition to that, we're also saying, can you uh, track your confidence levels over time and adjust them as you learn new things because you're gonna regularly self-critique your confidence levels as well as the hypotheses that you build over your research process. And then we're also noting that the research needs to be broken down from a complex ask to more manageable asks that you then consolidate over time. So there's a lot of really interesting information in this prompt as to why it's useful, but I highly recommend just using this for your research going forward because you're gonna get much better responses back for things that truly matter. And then our final tip is Claude's really good at making documents, specifically because it uses a Claude skill or a variety of Claude skills that allows it to create documents that are more compelling. So this is going to be in the relation to presentations, animations inside of presentations and or landing pages like this. 
or any type of visual document that's relating to a PDF, an Excel sheet, etc. So it's generally better at creating these types of documents and they tend to be formatted more effectively instead of what we used to get back in the day with other models. So what are some examples of this? Well, the first one here is a presentation. So a bad prompt is make me a presentation. A better prompt, a stronger one, is create me a professional presentation on topic, you fill in the topic, including thoughtful design elements, visual hierarchy, and engaging animations when appropriate. So we're asking specifically about certain design elements and asking it to think hard about those elements. So when it provides us back a presentation, it's more compelling. So that's a better prompt. Another example here is a report. So instead of saying, write me a report, a bad prompt, a better prompt is create a monthly report for my team, include a summary at the top, sections for each department, charts showing our progress, action items for the, ne for the next month, and use clean formatting that's easy to scan. So we're asking for a lot of things here. We're asking explicitly what should be included in the prompt. We're being very uh, specific on the inclusion. We're also being very explicit on the formatting as well because we want people to be able to scan this instead of having to read it or struggle to read through it. And that's our seventh tip. And as a quick recap, here are just seven rules that I pulled from Anthropic themselves on how you can get most the most out of their models. So the first one here is about being clear. You want to be clear with the model because it's very good at following instructions. So be clear in your prompt. The second thing is always provide your intent. Explain why as to why you're asking the AI to do this thing for you. It can infer more from that and give you a higher quality response. After that, you should give it high quality examples if you decide to give it examples because the AI is going to follow them to the T. That includes the prompt itself of how you're writing it. So be very careful on the prompt that you're drafting. After that, if you care about formatting, you want to be explicit about that and ask for certain types of formats from the AI. And that means we're asking the AI what to do instead of what not to do. After this, we have the importance of being direct with the AI. So if we want it to take action, we need to be clear on it taking that action. If we want it to suggest something, we need to be clear on that. Also, it's very good at research, and that meta prompt that I showed you, you should use that probably for good on all your research going forward with this specific model, because it's night and day compared to what I've gotten in the past. And then finally, it's very good at creating documents, and it's good at following different types of formatting um, for generalized reports, Excel sheets, presentations, etc. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this, reshare with your friends. And also, as a reminder, two things. First off, below is a 30-day AI Insight series. Completely free, you'll get 30 insights in your inbox so you can apply AI to your business and your work. Second thing is if you'd like to work with me, there's a variety of ways you can do that, either through a private AI community or directly one-on-one. -on -one. You can check that out below as well. Okay, so now we know that Claude can create great documents. Anthropic even says so. But here's the thing. It still can't match your formatting, your fonts, your colors, your style. You still have to copy the content and fix it by hand in the document. I found one Claude feature that fixes this. Now every document that comes back to me is exactly how I want it. Let me show you right here. Go ahead. Click that video right there. See you next time, Internet.